Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is our full review of the Nexus 7 tablet. Let's get to it. It says it right on the box. This tablet is made for Google Play. But really, the Nexus 7 is made for two groups of people, as we mentioned in our unboxing. First, it's made for what we call the granny group. That is, people that want things to be simple and easy. The granny group want a great out-of-box experience. The second group that the Nexus 7 is made for is the power user. Those that want to be able to customize every aspect of their device, have the fastest software possible, and be able to upgrade their device with third-party tweaks, mods, and ROMs. Whether you're a part of the first or second group, the Nexus 7's price tag of $199 or $249 is extremely attractive. Our review will mostly target the second group, the power user. Let's start off talking about hardware. The 7-inch form factor for many is a sweet spot and better alternative to the 10-inch tablets that reign supreme. At 7 inches, the tablet becomes narrow enough to where portrait typing is very comfortable. Also at 7 inches, the device can be lightweight enough to feel unsubstantial, which is critical when reading, watching video, or using the tablet for a long period of time. Our Nexus 7 came from Google I.O. and thus has the white backing. Everyone else that buys the Nexus 7 through Google Play will get the gray backing. If you really like the white, chances are you'll be able to buy a white backing from a third party as the white component is just a back cover that is probably easy to remove and change. The back cover, whether white or gray, has a fantastic dimple texture that helps tremendously to make the device feel comfortable and steady in hand. It's made from a rubbery plastic. Here on the back we see a big Nexus logo plus Asus branding on the bottom. The speaker below the Asus branding was unremarkable. Like most tablets, it's relatively quiet and sounds tinny. On the bottom here, we have a micro USB charging port plus a 3.5 millimeter headphone plug. On the side, we have a power button and volume rocker. The power button protrudes away from the body of the Nexus 7, making it easy to feel for. Unfortunately, because the front of the Nexus 7 is so symmetrical, we found ourselves often picking up the tablet from the wrong end and missing the power button. The front-facing camera is really the only way to tell which end is the top. In terms of weight, the Nexus 7 is one of the lightest tablets on the market, lending to an especially comfortable experience when holding it for long periods of content viewing. The Nexus 7 might have the appearance of thinness, but it's really not. At 10.5 millimeters thick, Google and Asus was able to create the illusion of thinness thanks to this sharp edge. But in hand, when you wrap your fingers around the back of the Nexus 7, there's definitely a fair amount of thickness to it. Let's talk about the display. It's a 1280 by 800 7 inch LCD panel. If you're using a Galaxy Nexus or any other device with an AMOLED screen, you're likely to find the screen of the Nexus 7 to be washed out and lacking contrast and adequate color saturation in comparison. We characterized the display on the Nexus 7 as dull because of this. That said, thanks to a reasonable PPI of 214, text is sharp and crisp, even though you can still see pixels if you look closely. In terms of other specs, the Nexus 7 is the first 7-inch tablet with a quad-core CPU. It has a Tegra 3 1.3 GHz CPU, and Google claims that there are 12, yes, 12 GPU cores. Inside, you'll also find a gigabyte of RAM and either 8 gigs or 16 gigs of storage. Because of the low price point, some compromises had to be made. For example, there is no micro SD storage. Also, there are no cellular data options, which severely hampers the portability of the Nexus 7. The Nexus 7 has the newest version of Android, version 4.1 Jelly Bean. While we've talked a lot about Jelly Bean, and be sure to check out our tour of Jelly Bean on the Galaxy Nexus, we'll cover the features of Jelly Bean that most impact the experience on the Nexus 7. Let's turn the device on. Here on the home screen, we can begin to see the dichotomy between the two intended audiences of the Nexus 7, the granny group and the power user. Out of the box, the Nexus 7 presents you with content from Google Play. Lots and lots of content. In Jelly Bean, there are several new widgets that give you a Nook tablet-like experience by putting movies, TV shows, magazines, books, and songs at your fingertips. Here I've got two home screens showing my movies and TV content, my music, some recommendations, and so on. All of the Google Play content widgets are pre-made as a kind of mosaic of all your content. You can't, for instance, pick which books or shows go on your home screen like you can with the Nook tablet. It just kind of randomizes the order. And to help you get started on Google Play, you get a $25 store credit as soon as you activate the Nexus 7 with your Google account. This works seamlessly and you'll get an email telling you that the credit has been added. Now what if you don't want to buy content from Google Play? 
Fortunately, since this is Android, you have a lot of choice. If you rather stream your movies from Netflix, that's fine, get the Netflix app. If you rather stream music from Spotify, that's fine, get the Spotify app. Unlike the Nook tablet and Kindle Fire, you have complete freedom to get content however you choose. Here in the center, I have a home screen that makes a lot more sense to me as a power user. It's clean and simple and neatly organized, with a handful of folders for my most used apps, and also a battery widget at the top. I have some remaining space where I might place an email widget or other. Something else you're likely to notice is that Google used a phone layout for the Nexus 7, meaning the notification shade is at the top instead of the bottom. This reminds us a lot of the first Galaxy Tab, which was based off of Gingerbread. Frankly, we kind of liked having the notifications on the bottom, which wish there was a way to switch it on the Nexus 7. Now let's talk about Jelly Bean. We're going to cover two areas that impact the Nexus 7 the most. The first is Project Butter, and the second is notifications. In all previous versions of Android, there was an unexplainable lag in a lot of places, like opening the app drawer, the task switcher, and so on. Project Butter aims to fix that by forcing the entire UI to operate at a high frame rate, and also to prioritize touch input so that the system anticipates your touches and makes sure that the system is as responsive as possible. We're happy to report that this has made a huge difference in the overall fluidity of Android. Everything feels, well, buttery smooth, with the exception of the occasional hiccup, most notably in the web browser, which might be a result of early software. The second feature of Android 4.1 we want to cover is notifications. Notifications appear where they do for a phone. The shade has been redesigned to allow notifications to give you more information, like email previews and action buttons. We really won't see the full utility of this feature uh, until developers update their apps. Notifications can now be expanded and contracted with an awkward two-finger gesture. Now let's get into the actual use of the tablet. On the Nexus 7, you can now read magazines. You can actually read magazines on any Android device now, as long as your Google Play has received the update, which is nice because if you buy a magazine on your tablet, you can read it later on your phone, although at this time the page is not synchronized. But reading magazines on the Nexus 7 is a little bit awkward, though a bit better than on the Nook tablet or Kindle Fire because they have lower resolution screens. Here in the Play Magazine app, we can flip through the magazines that I've bought, most of which have a free trial so you can try it before you buy it. The selection of magazines in Google Play is a bit thin at the moment. Clicking on a magazine will take you into a horizontally scrollable list of pages, just like you get on the Nook tablet or Kindle Fire. You can use the usual page navigation tools on the bottom, like thumbnail previews and a table of contents pop out. You can view an article in a text view, which is nice because the display on the Nexus 7 isn't high resolution enough to be able to read most magazines at the entire zoomed out view. There's a lot of pinching and zooming to be done if you want to get the full content of the article. Beyond magazines, the Nexus 7 does a pretty good job at playing back 720p video with good frame rates, though you'll see black bars on the top and the bottom. That said, if you rather purchase your content and download it than stream it, you'll be excited to see that Google Play now has TV shows. Right now, the selection is limited. Let's talk about gaming. As mentioned, Google claimed that the Nexus 7 has 12, 12 GPU cores, so we were expected to be blown away by gaming. We use Tegra Zone to find titles optimized for the Tegra 3 CPU, such as Shadow Gun and Zen Pinball. Here in Shadow Gun, gaming performance looked quite good, but it's obvious that the game is not optimized for the 1280 x 800 display because we saw quite a bit of artifacting. In Zen Pinball, we had much better results. Then in GTA 3, we once again saw quite a bit of artifacting, but performance was generally good, but not amazing. Overall, the Nexus 7 is one of the best gaming tablets around, but we think Google overhyped it as the ultimate gaming machine. Now let's talk a bit about web browsing. The default browser on the Nexus 7 is Chrome. Those that use Chrome on the desktop will enjoy tab, bookmark, and password synchronization. We're also really digging the side swipe gesture that lets you switch between tabs without having to tap on the tabs at the top. Under heavy use case scenarios, with many tabs open and while na navigating a graphically intense web page, Chrome did indeed stutter and lag. Again, this might have to do with the fact that Chrome is still new and Jelly Bean is not totally finalized, but we were at times disappointed with the web browsing performance when pushing the limits of the tablet. Finally, let's talk about some test notes. First, battery life. Google claims 8 to 10 hours of battery life on the Nexus 7. After two days of use, with about three hours of use on each day, my Nexus 7 ran out of juice, but that included a lot of game playing and video watching. 
with average use, battery life should be in this eight to 10 hour range uh, that is advertised. We also noticed that the Nexus 7 takes a particularly long time to charge, perhaps even a bit longer than the iPad 3, which takes seven hours to go from zero to 100%. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the Nexus 7. We like that it has a fantastic price. We like that overall, it provides great performance and fluidity in all apps and while navigating the OS. And finally, we like that the tablet feels fantastic in hand, often reminding us of a paperback book with its lightweight. What we don't like is that the screen appears dull and washed out. We don't like that the device takes nearly seven hours to charge, and we don't like that there is no micro SD storage plus no option for cellular data. We give the Nexus 7 a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So in conclusion, while there are several compromises you have to live with with the Nexus 7, such as a screen that is overall dull, uh, no micro SD storage, and no cellular data options, it's 199 bucks, and it's fast, and it works very, very well end to end. It can't be beat. It's a Kindle Fire killer, although the Kindle Fire 2 should be out relatively soon. Uh, but Standing by itself, the Nexus 7 is an awesome tablet, and if you've pre-ordered one, you can feel confident that it's a fast, capable tablet uh, that, that is an extremely good value. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, and thanks for watching. That's it for now.